and welcome to Think Watercolour. Um, my name is Paul Webber and today I'm going to be working from this reference photograph. Uh, I took this picture back in April this year um, at Anstruther on the east coast of Scotland, just south of St Andrews. Um, the boat sort of leaning against the harbour wall caught my eye, I just thought it would make a, uh, a good uh, picture at some point. Uh, the, and the positioning of the boat, about a third of the way across, and then the horizon line, which is the, the harbour wall, roughly a third of the way down, it just makes it a nice composition. I particularly like the way the, uh, the water is reflecting the sky. The sky is a little bit on the weak side, I'm going to change that a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I've already drawn uh, the image. I've been fairly careful with the boat because it's the main feature of the painting. I've put some masking fluid on these various boats and bits and pieces in the background along the harbour wall. Uh, they're going to be a bit, a bit on the vague side once it's painted, but um, I wanted to retain the white of the paper so that uh, the colour of the boats doesn't look muddy when I paint them. Uh, I've also put a little bit of masking fluid and a few other spots here and there uh, just to retain the white of the paper. What I'm going to do is wet the paper first with some clean water uh, for the sky. I'm only going to do the sky area. And I'm going to leave some areas uh, clear of water or free of water uh, because I want to retain the whiteness of the paper for parts of the sky. Nothing too specific, very vague. Just a um, few, few areas where there's clear white showing through. Nothing too specific. along the harbour wall. I'm using cerulean and a touch of cobalt blue for the blue part of the sky. Just where there's water, just touch some in few places, a little bit up here, nothing specific, just vague patches of blue. I'm going to add some alizarin crimson just to create a little bit of colour for some of the clouds. Just. Uh, graze the mix a little bit. The paper I'm using by the way is Saunders Waterford 300 gram high white rough just with a damp brush I'm just going to soften some of these edges. I like to have a few hard edges but uh, not straight edges. You very rarely see an absolutely straight edge in a cloud. So just soften those a little bit, blend it all in. Bring that, bring that uh, Give that a little bit more strength there. And this right hand corner. Let's lift out a little bit there, soften that. Just with a damp brush, just take off the edge of that pool of water there. I've got the board, my 
board at an angle of about 35 degrees so gravity is having some effect but uh, you can stop that just by lifting out the water that's going to be darker anyway that's the harbour wall there and I think that'll do for the sky I'm just going to mix up some more cerulean And you can see on the, from the photo there's it's it's blue coming into sort of a lilac-y purpley light purple near the foreground and there are patches of light at the back. So it's going to with the cerulean just uh, loosely indicate where that is. Use a slightly dry brush te de technique to pick up some of the texture of the paper. Suggest sparkle on the water. And as I come forward, I'm just going to darken this area in the foreground here, blend it together. comes towards us. It's just a suggestion of the reflection of the sky really. Maybe a little bit. Let's pick up some sparkle in the muddy area there. I'm just mixing up some sap green and a touch of ultramarine for the harbour wall at the back while the area that I've just painted is still a little bit damp I'm going to just put that in with some clear water just feather that down for the reflection It's, it's all very vague here. It's quite a quite a way away from the uh, boat in the foreground. Okay, I'm just going to let that dry, and then I'll mix up uh, the colour for the uh, the hull of the boat. I think we'll do that next. Just mixed up a uh, fairly strong mix of the pigment of ultramarine and some alizarin crimson just to darken it, darken the ultramarine. I'm just going to paint uh, the left hand side of the hull, uh, the blue section of it. This brush is a, an Escoda Perla, by the way, uh, number 12. Lovely brushes, they hold a really nice, neat, nice sharp point for doing careful detail work like this. Just want to keep a hard edge at the point of the bow.
this side's going to be much darker because it's in, it's in deep shadow. I just want to add a little bit of pigment, let it bleed from here. Just to keep that nice and dark, just lift out a little bit. Just take some of the pigment out here, just to lighten that side a little bit, that should be fine. For the underside of the hole I'm going to use some Wins are red. And add some burnt sienna. Just to get that deep rust colour. Strengthen that a little bit here. A bit more pigment. Just going to grab some yellow ochre. Just drop that in here at the front because it's worn away and scraped away and the colour's gone from this part of the hull. So I'll just Try and keep this while it's wet, yellow ochre. With a very watered down mix of the same mix, I'm going to paint the shadow side of this white stripe. And then once all that's dry, I can do the darker areas. Just add a little bit more. It's fine. And I'll use the same colour for the deck that you can just barely see. Well, that side of the hull is drying, I'll just uh, use the same mix, just add a little bit of neutral tint. Use the same colour for the uh, windows and on the cabin, just to block those in. Just the initial, initial wash. I will put some darker areas in these cabin windows just to break them up but uh, 
for the time being I just want to get them in looking fairly neat because it's as I say this the boat is the focal point of the painting and I want it to look as tidy as I can from a painting point of view without trying to make it a photographic replica at the end of the day it's all, it should always be an interpretation especially when you're working from photographs never try and copy them slavishly but when you're doing something like this or if you're painting a person or people nearby try to be a bit more careful because uh, if you're too vague with them when they when they they're close up they'll never look right i'm going to leave the white of the paper for the cabin because it's a nice bright white cabin i'm just going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to that same mix and to paint the the harbour wall in the background being careful without being too finicky and try very hard not to touch this wet paint here A very watered down version of the same colour. I'm just going to just suggest the reflection in the water. This is uh, the same mixture, but with a of for the uh, the blue of the hull, but with some uh, Payne's grey added, just to Payne's grey has a slight blue, or my the Payne's grey I'm using has a slight blue tint to it, and it um, just helps to deepen the blue for this shadow side of the hull. problem with painting darks is it's very easy to move the paint to move the pigment pigment around And it is a subtle difference between this side and that side of the boat. This is in dark shadow, so trying not to be too fiddly. That's fine. Okay, rinse the brush. And with the same mix that I used for the underside of the hull on this side. I'm just going to add some of this ultramarine and Payne's grey mix to really darken this part of the hull. This is yeah, this is a size 12 brush, which is a good size. Always try and work with a as big a brush as you can. You'll find you'll Paint looser, even though even though I'm trying to do this in a controlled way, especially when you're doing 
less detailed work, the bigger the brush, the more loose the painting and natural the painting will look. And this, this area here is in deep shadow, so is this. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing that shortly, but I, I'm not going to do those until those two washes are dry because I really do not want anything bleeding into them. Whilst this side of the hole is drying, I'll just add a little bit more detail into these windows. I'm just going to take some of that mix for this side of the hole and just mix it with... Um, some of the blue and it just creates this nice warmish grey which is a bit of a juxtaposition just put a few patches of shadow, more shadow in these windows just to indicate that there's they're not just clear windows there's stuff inside you in the shadows just breaks up the <coughs> look of the window. Uh, using the same mix, I've just added some uh, Windsor Red. Check that's okay. For the road. Again, I'll need to be very careful that I don't touch those washes. So I'm just going to just painting in the road disappears into the background quite a bit. Carefully go around this cabin. a rail along here that uh, the boats are moored to. So I'll just make sure I don't obliterate that completely. I'm just going to lift some of this colour out. It's a bit, a bit dark. Just some clear water. Just lift. I've added some sepia to the uh, dark blue mix and I'm going to use that for this shadow more this side than this but a little bit on this side too um, Quite a strong mix this, a lot of pigment. If you, when you're doing darks always try and use a lot of pigment rather than watered down because they will dry much lighter if you're not careful. If you want a really dark dark it's always wise to get as much pigment in your mix as possible. 
whilst I'm painting this with a hard edge I'm going to soften this edge shortly by blending in some other colours. Okay. So down this side of the harbour wall there's lots of green mould and all sorts of seaweed left on the wall. So I'm going to use basically sap green and I may add some yellow to that but let's, let's start with I'm going to let these bleed together so we get a soft soft edge to the shadow and this extends along the floor of the harbour. It's quite patchy this. And at the top it's got a slight Let me blow a hint. bit of water just to break that up a little bit and along the bottom here this is a mixture of uh, sepia and burnt umber just with a shadow softens and gets a little bit lighter try and avoid hard edges just pull that across to this area with a dry brush just, just to suggest some texture at some of the darker mix in a few places. Vary the colour slightly. Drop some some of that dark mix in here because it's it really is a piece of rough ground here. Now we're getting some blooms here and I do not want those. Use the side of the brush to blend that in. Using this same almost black mix, I'm just going to 
paint the top of the hull. I just want to show you a trick for getting a nice straight line if you're not not sure of your abilities. Get an old credit card, just, just run your brush along the edge to the length that you need it, of course, don't, uh, and then just touch the paper. You don't have to show every bit of a mast, just just you yeah, just indicate it uh, for, for there for example it goes to about there so that's the stanchion supporting the presumably radar mast doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way you can always touch it in a bit later that's fine And it's a simple trick, but it, if you want a really nice straight line and you don't feel confident to do it, that's the way to do it. <clears throat> you can do it with the edge of a piece of uh, scrap uh, watercolour paper, but the lines tend to be a lot thicker. So be careful when you're doing it that way. But Practice, practice, practice. So I'm now going to just add some of the background detail. Whilst I want the colours to be pretty bright. Uh, I don't want them over bright otherwise they'll they'll come forward so just uh, keep it simple to start with. So boat with the red hole there. Maybe darken that a little bit. A bit more pigment. Greenish hole. What I'm going to do is get a small flat brush, barely damp, just drag the colours down for the reflection. Strengthen a little bit. I may darken these. I think that for the moment, it's no real deal to detail. It's just lots uh, a mixture of <coughs> different shapes. And the reflection in the water. No real deal to detail, it's so far away you can't really make out what's what until you get a little bit closer. A few boat holes, different colours, a few bits on the harbour. Stacks of boxes and things on the harbour wall. A little bit of colour. I 
I say there's no real de real detail here. Just the suggestion of lots of boats moored up along the quayside. A few white patches for some of the cabins. Pull that down with some clear water just for reflection. You really can't make out any detail, it's so far away. As we get closer, there's a boat here that's a bit more clearly defined. Soften these out. Helps if you use clean water. And a clean brush. I will put some darker darks and lighter lights in shortly. With rigger, keep it loose. This boat's got a blue outboard motor on so we'll just pop that in. Just adds to the variation in colours. It really is very abstract. I'm strengthening. I'm trying not to go over the top with the colours because I don't want the eye. Said here, you're getting paint everywhere. I don't want the eye dragged into the distance. Uh, the focus is. Supposed to be all at the front here. There are a couple of uh, items that I want to uh, make quite bright, and one is a, a red box. I presume it's something to do with safety, as it's bright red on the key side here. There's a boy or a life belt. here. So I'm putting those in quite dark. So I want the eye bit to be drawn to that, to that and the lights on the boats which are here. Just soften that one at the back a little bit. It's a little bit too strong, but the eyes, the eye will see these reds.
It's all the little touches that make the difference with um, paintings like this. A few lines here, there. Something leaning against the wall, old pallet maybe. Just a few things, just to little bits and pieces. Need to put a little bit of tiny amount of white reflection in there. You've got these. Just kill that a little bit. Bits of white reflecting in the water. A few dabs of white on the boats. That should be enough. The trick is not to go overboard with things like this. Maybe a little bit of reflection in the water there. Just going to add some detail along this rail. Don't need to be too pedantic about it. Just follow the Shadow. Okay, I've just uh, mixed up some Windsor yellow and some pyrrole orange, just a touch of pyrrole orange for the roof of the cabin. Darken this edge once this is dry. Maybe just a touch more for In the foreground here there's lots of bits and pieces of rock and stone and 
debris on the bed, so just tint it to what's there. Very loose, small brush just tickling in some details. Some of the shadow areas. Just going to put some white gouache in a few spots where there's white stone showing. few here and there, nothing too much. Trick is not to do too many, not to go over the top. Yeah, I'm just going to put some of the uh, final details in. Um, paint is pretty dry now, so fairly safe to rest my hand on there. Just darkening the edge of this roof of the cabin. I'm going to use some white gouache to use a smaller brush. Carefully paint in the numbers on the side of the boat. They don't have to be perfect, but I like to make them as neat as possible. There's a white stripe along, along the side of the boat too, which is there. And there's a, a light blue stripe, which Add some blue to the gouache, which is
Okay. Likewise, there are some silver rails. Just indicate with some white to start with. And along the edge of the some of the stonework, there's a little bit of light reflection, just, just where the light's catching the edge. The stonework. Smudge that with the thumb just to kill the whiteness a little bit. It's catching the tops of and the edges of the stonework. Stronger. And with a rigger, I'm going to put in some of the uh, ropes. There's a couple of ropes. Ropes tied to the, more moored to the key side. Yeah. One across there. I think um, I think that's pretty much finished. Um, I've just added a few more darker lines along the rails. The composition's quite good now because you have these these reds take move the eye around. The sky is brighter than the uh, photograph. And overall, I think it's quite a pleasing finish, so I'm happy with that. I hope you've learned something from watching this video. Please subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell for future videos. And uh, please give the video a like if you liked it. And uh, thanks again for watching.